There's one more wrinkle. The opponent's end zone is here. Our end zone is here. This was, remember, minus two. This was seven points or about. And the EP curve looked like that. And we had, uh, this was, midfield was about two points. And uh, that was the 50 yard line. And remember we said the zero, um, the zero point, the neutral point, where both the offense, the team on offense and the team on defense were equally likely to score was around a, an offense's own 15. Now, when we kick off, we have to give the opponent the ball, more than likely. And uh, they typically, it's the, since the, the rule change in, in 2009, the, um, it's about at the 22-yard line is the average point at which the uh, return team uh, gets the ball. So that's positive. That's more than zero. So every time we kick off, we give positive point expectancy back to our opponent. And remember, let's take, take a step back. We're talking about points. And we don't want to maximize our points. If we score 42 points, that's great. That's a lot. But uh, maybe we're a, uh, a Mike Martz kind of team. And we give up 45. We have a lot of turnovers and interceptions. And uh, even though we scored a lot and we optimized the amount of points we could score, we, we did so at the cost of allowing uh, too many points. So we don't want to optimize our own score. What we want to do is optimize the difference between our score and the opponent's score. So that's net point expectancy, and that's what we're talking about. So when we hand the ball back to the opponent, that's a cost, and we need to consider that when we score a touchdown or field goal. So it doesn't cost a lot, but it is about half a point. Remember, this was about the 22-yard line. There's a lot of touchbacks these days, uh, but on average, returns get out to about the 22. If we factor in penalties and uh, potential turnovers and returns and so forth, uh, we've get um, we're about right here, and it's about half a point. Uh, so touchdowns. Remember when we averaged out all the the possible scores? We had sometimes we scored touchdowns. Sometimes our opponent got touchdowns. Sometimes our opponent got field goals. Um, we got a touchdown here on that one. Uh, we uh, forced a safety here and so on. Well, this is no longer seven points. It's about 6.5. And this is minus 6.5. It's minus 2.5 and so on. For a safety, it actually goes the other way. We need to uh, account for the free kick, and the uh, team that scored, that got the two points for the safety, gets the ball back. So it's actually worth slightly more than three points, 3.2 or so, 3.3 points, expected points, I should say, because free kicks usually result in pretty good field position for the, for the receiving team. So there's a bonus. Uh, you get the ball. So... This becomes slightly less than 6.5 instead of slightly less than 7 here. And that affects the way our, our curve, we redo, rebuild this curve, and we, it's about the same. It looks the same. Uh, it's just uh, we've now accounted for the fact that there's going to be a kickoff after a score. So here on the 1 millimeter yard line, it's no longer 7 points. It's just under 6.5 and that cascades back through the rest of the field. Um, it doesn't go, it doesn't reach down to minus three points. It still stays at two uh, because safeties are unlikely. Even when the ball is very close to your own goal line, uh, most plays are positive. Most teams are able to get uh, football, at least some positive yards and can at least punt, punt it out of there. Uh, so it doesn't uh, go all the way down to um, negative three points. 
expected points, but um, stays around minus two. So anyway, that's one big wrinkle that we need to account for in expected points. And once we do that, uh, now we can start uh, making some pretty interesting and pretty useful applications of the concept. And that's what we'll talk about next. So let's talk about a, uh, one, just one application of what expected points can tell us, something that, that yards couldn't tell us, uh, first downs can't tell us, counting up completions or anything else can't tell us. So let's say that um, we've just scored. We just scored a, a touchdown or field goal, and uh, just by luck, the, uh, our opponent has been flagged for an unsportsmanlike conduct and uh, we get to kick off from the 50 instead of our own 35. So uh, that's a pretty good deal. We are uh, kicking off here. And uh, this is actually how I think about football. I have this little curve in my head here. And uh, so we're kicking off. We are um, going to give the ball to our opponent possibly uh, if we just kick off normally we're almost guaranteed a touchback and that is going to give the ball to them at the 20 which is about i don't know about a point three um or so uh, expected point value so we uh just a conventional kickoff okay the ep value is going to be uh positive uh, 0.3 but remember that's for our opponent we, we want to think about things for our own perspective. So remember, football is a zero-sum game. Whatever points, whatever net points my opponent achieves is uh, inverse of the net points I'm trying to achieve. So that's negative 0.3 for me if I kick off. Now I can uh, I can also onside kick, and that's a gamble, right? So if I'm going to onside kick, I could be giving the ball to my opponent at uh, his own 40. So onside. Uh, fail. So if I fail to recover, he gets a first and 10 at his own 40, which is worth about 1.5 expected points. And that's negative, right? Because it's from my perspective, negative 1.5 EP. Not that there. And now what if I succeed? Uh, an onside recovery would give me uh, the ball around uh, the same point here uh, at, actually, we're going this way now. We're going towards our own end zone. Uh, the field gets flipped. Since it's from our perspective, we get the ball now. And that's around right right there. And that's about um, a 2.7. So I'm getting these, I'm getting these values uh, directly from my actual uh, expected point model that I use uh, every day. And the, uh, this is positive, right? Because this is, these are our points. We've got the ball and the opponent's uh, on the plus 40. Uh, so now what does that tell us? It's just a bunch of numbers. I mean, who cares, right? Well, it can tell us some really cool stuff. Now we could say, this is a gamble, it's kind of a lottery. There's a probability of success, a certain probability of success. We may not know what that is, uh, just yet, but that's okay. We know there's a probability of success of uh, getting this value, and there's a 1 minus p probability of success of getting this value, the failure value. And we need to compare that lottery, this, this bet right here, this gamble, we're going to compare that to our safe uh, alternative, which is a uh, negative 0.03. So in case anybody's confused by the P and the 1 minus P, um, 
you know, just think of it like a weighted coin, right? That uh, comes up maybe uh, heads 75% of the time. Uh, it would come up uh, tails 1 minus 0.75, right? 25% of the time. That's just how percentages work and probabilities work. So don't be confused by that. That's all we're doing there with the P and the 1 minus P. So let's, uh, let's do some math. Now, I want to say that uh, what is that P, what is that probability of success that makes it worthwhile that, so that this gamble here is as valuable as my safe alternative there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, make some extra room here. I'm going to say, Probability of success times 2.7, which is the value, the EP value for success, plus 1 minus P times negative 1.5, which is our value of failure. And for, for this to be, this is the value of that gamble. And it needs to be at least the value of our, of our certainty equivalent, which was the kickoff, which we know is going to be a touchback, and that's going to be negative uh, 0.3. So this whole equation needs to be at least as big as this. So we set them equal to 0, and we solve for p. And that p variable turns out to be, I won't make you suffer through the math, but it's about uh, 24, so about 24% of the time. And since we said this needs to be at least as big as this, our chance of recovery needs to be at least 24% for the gamble to be worthwhile. And that gamble was the onside attempt. So if a coach is at least 24% confident that uh, based on the game situation and the players he has and the way the tendency, the opponent tendencies have been going and, and the film he's watched, if he's at least 24% co confident that he can recover that kick. Remember, that's, the, that's less than 50-50. Most of the time, he's going to fail, and it would still be worthwhile. So as long as you think you have a 24% chance of success, then onside is the thing to do. If you think you have less than a 24% chance of success, don't do the onside kick. So that's just one application of expected points. Obviously, fourth downs is a big one. Um, uh, penalty acceptance and declining, uh, that's a big one. Uh, there are all kinds, of, um, all kinds of applications. The biggest probably is simply uh, valuing uh, play outcomes. Uh, just like we started the discussion with uh, run versus pass uh, discussion, EP takes into account all kinds of, all events on the field. It takes into account penalties, takes into account scores, takes into account turnovers, um, gains and losses, um, and so on. So that's what, that's what EP is, that's what expected points is. And that's, those are some of the applications that uh, uh, can be used with it. So that uh, wraps up our first discussion on expected points.